So let's see how strong your basic algebra skills are by taking on this problem right here without the aid of a calculator. And what is the problem? Well, the problem is the following. We have this algebraic or variable expression and it's parentheses 4x, uh, 4xy plus y minus 8x and parentheses divided by xy. And we want to evaluate this for the values x equals 1 and y is equal to negative 2. So this kind of question on a test or textbook would be something like evaluate the expression for the following values. Again, try to do this without the aid of a calculator because, um, you know, really that is going to kind of, you know, check your understanding for a lot of basic math and algebra skills that you definitely need to know. All right, so that is the question. And if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. Then of course, I'll walk through exactly how to solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need assistance in learning math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so pretty straightforward problem here. Again, we want to evaluate this variable or algebraic expression for these values, but hopefully it's pretty obvious what to do. But let's go ahead and get into this right now. And again, uh, what we want to do is evaluate, right? Evalu this is a huge topic in basic math. And anytime we evaluate any expression or basic algebra rather, uh, you want to use parentheses to plug in your values. Okay, this is a big, big problem. A lot of students just plug in uh, their values like this. I'm like, okay, four, X is one, so that'd be four times one, Y is negative two, to put a negative two there, plus Y, that's another negative two. You see, they're, they're put, plugging in values without parentheses. That is not a good habit to get in. You want to use parentheses for a number of different reasons. It will help you avoid making uh, very common mistakes with positive and negative numbers. So the key to doing this problem uh, beyond you know understanding the concepts like the order of operations, et cetera, is really managing the information. And you got to be as neat as possible and just take it one step at a time. And if you do that, then you're gonna definitely increase your probability of getting this right. Okay, so first things first, we're gonna go ahead and replace all the X and Ys that we see here with these respective values, one and negative two. And you can see that work done right here. Now, when you do this problem or a problem like this in real life on a test, quiz, exam, homework, doesn't make a difference. What you wanna do is once you plugged in everything, don't, don't just start. Be like, okay, I'm so happy. I'm ready to solve this problem. I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. Like, no, 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 you gotta slow down because here is another major problem that students make. They'll plug in information, even with parentheses, but they'll oftentimes plug in the wrong number for something. That's a very common uh, mistake. So don't start this problem in earnest until you double and triple check that, in fact, you got everything plugged in because it's easier to correct something here than versus, you know, doing a bunch of work and be like, oh, my goodness, I plugged in the wrong values. Now you got to go up, fix these values and start again. OK, so again, I'm just telling you things that I've learned painfully over several decades. Of course, um. You know, I've had the best of math students make these uh, kind of mistakes, so just be careful. Okay, so we got everything plugged in correctly, and now we can kind of start off and go to the races by uh, thinking about the order of operations. So uh, this is a big, big topic. I'm not I'm, I'm going to get fully into the order of operations. I will kind of list it up here. Uh, again, this is PEMDAS, and I'll just quickly review it. But if you want to know more about the order of operations, I have a ton of additional videos on this um, on uh, my YouTube channels. I'll also give you some course recommendations um, as we kind of get into this video. But basically, the order of operations is the, uh, the correct order that we have to do this problem. So P is parentheses. We've got to do everything in parentheses, and we have to look for these larger parentheses. So we're going to have to focus on all this stuff in here. And then, uh, you know, this is, again, I'm kind of rushing through in a full explanation. I just don't want to make this video too long. Uh, e is powers or exponents. So we're kind of, this is a checklist that goes from left to right. M and D are a group. We're going to do multiplication or division, whatever we see first from left to right. And then A and S is addition or subtraction, whatever we see first from left to right. Tons of students make mistakes when it comes to the order of operations. So 
you know, um, you know, I apologize for kind of rushing through this, but uh, if you are not really understanding what I'm doing here, please review the order of operations. This is like basic math, and unfortunately, a lot of people don't understand the basics as well as they think. Okay, so we have a lot of parentheses. Now, these parentheses right here are just the values that we plugged in. Okay, but there's nothing uh, mathematically to do inside of those parentheses. In other words, there's no math operations to do, but we do have this uh, big set of parentheses right here. Okay, so we're going to focus our attention on doing this. And so basically we have like problems within problems. Okay, so here we go. So we have our parentheses and now what do we have right here? Well, we have multiplication here and we have multiplication here. So we're just going to uh, uh, do multiplication whatever we see first from left to right. So we got four times one times negative two. Again, I'm hoping that you understand positive and negative numbers, but the correct answer is negative eight. All right, so four times one times negative two is negative eight. Again, we wanna do this problem without the eight of a calculator, plus negative two minus eight times one, which of course will be eight. We'll do that in just one second, divided by one divided by negative two, or one times uh, negative two. Okay, so we'll get to all this one step at a time. Take it nice and easy for those of you out there that just kind of want to see all the steps. All right, so here is our first step. So now we can go ahead and handle this. Again, we have to focus on what is inside of the uh, parentheses first. In other words, we've got to do all this uh, work until we get this down to one value. All right, so we have negative eight plus negative two minus eight times one. And eight times one, of course, is eight. And we're not done yet, but we're getting there. We have negative eight plus negative two minus eight divided by one uh, times negative two. Now, in real life, quote unquote, uh, for those of you that are, you know, math students or, you know, pretty good at math, you could simplify some of this stuff. I'm kind of dragging this out a little bit just so I can kind of keep a uh, certain focus on the problem. Now, before we continue on, if you want to get better at math, you definitely can. But the key is to find a teacher that gives you clear and understandable instruction. So hopefully you like my teaching style. And if you do, if you're like, yes, I think I can learn from you. Well, then you will love my full main math courses. So uh, you can find the links to all of these courses in the description. But they include basic math, pre-algebra, algebra 1, geometry, algebra 2, pre-calculus, and a ton of specialized test prep math courses. Okay, so again, don't give up if you're having a tough time in math. I can definitely help you out. So you can check out the links to all these courses in the description. So let's get back to the video. And uh, let's focus in on the uh, parentheses because we're not done here. So we have negative eight plus negative two. I can just drop these parentheses around this negative two that I had right here because there was nothing to do here. So that's okay. You, you don't have to keep those parentheses there. You really need those parentheses when you first plug in those values. Now we have all these negative numbers. So negative eight plus negative two is negative 10 plus a negative eight is negative 18. Again, we're doing this without the eight of a calculator and we're getting pretty close to the answer. So we have negative 18. Finally, we are done. So what operations do we have left? Well, if you look here, we have division and we have multiplication. So we have to continue to reference our PEMDAS and PEMDAS tells us what? Well, we finished with parentheses. Although we have numbers inside of parentheses, there's nothing, uh, there's no operations to do in there. Uh, e stands for exponents or powers, so there's nothing there. So we're down to multiplication and division. So what do we see first from left to right? We see division first. Okay, so this is what we need to do. Negative 18 divided by one. But a lot of students make uh, errors when it comes to the order of operations, uh, namely because this uh, step right here between multiplication and division, they think that, oh, you always have to do multiplication first and then division. That's not the way it works. It's whatever you see first from left to right. Okay, so we're almost done. Negative uh, 18 divided by a positive one. Pretty straightforward stuff. That's negative 18. And now we're going to take that negative 18 and multiply by negative 2. A uh, negative times a negative is a positive so negative 18 times a negative two is a positive 36. Okay, now of course you could just plug all these values into your calculator and get the right answer. And even doing that, a lot of students will get this wrong because they're just you know impatient. Math is a game. Well, it's not a game, but uh, it's, it's a skill that involves focus. Okay, and if you're having a tough time, you have to 
find a way to focus. Okay, focus is key. So try to do math in a place where you're not being distracted. You know, put your cell phone away and just focus on one problem at a time and uh, one step of the solution at a time. Okay, and there's nothing wrong with getting any problem, uh, you know, incorrect. The key is if you write out all the steps and you have some sort of uh, solution, you know, that's, you know, well written out, you could be like, oh, I don't understand this. This is where I made my error. Or if your teacher points out, this is where you got this wrong. If you fix this, well, then you'll be able to get the rest of the problem right. That's the key. That's why you need to be neat in math. You just don't want to be like, oh, here is the problem. Here is my solution. Well, I don't really know what you uh, don't know, and neither do you. Okay. All right. So hopefully this little video helps you out. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.